Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at vulnerability assessment. Vulnerability or weakness, or vulnerabilities for that matter, we might have many weaknesses. What is this concept? What are we assessing? Well, we're assessing our vulnerabilities, our exposure, our weaknesses. It's a comprehensive evaluation to identify and quantify, if we can quantify, the security weaknesses within our organization. Simply put, what are we doing? We're looking for weaknesses. Why are we doing so? Well, to improve our position, to improve our cybersecurity. That's why we do so. How often do we do that? We're going to do that on a regular basis. What is a regular basis? Well, depending on the company, depending on our need, this could be done weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually. It could be done daily. Basically, the system at the end of every night, it, it, it scans itself for vulnerability. We have those, what we call vulnerability scanner. So this process involves what we call a scanner. Think of a scanner like a radar scanning your environment, or think of it, another way to think of those vulnerability scanners are software. Software, software that's looking for information, that's looking for information that's going to do what? That's gonna harm you. That's what you're looking for. And you're looking for known vulnerabilities because these scanners, these tools that automate this process they, they, they already have like a database. They already know what weaknesses are, that already existed. They scan the system and compare to see what weaknesses that we have in our system that matches those known vulnerabilities. By deploying these scanners, by putting them to work, this organization can track the presence of known vulnerabilities over time. So as you scan, you would know, for example, last week I did not have this vulnerability here. Now this week, this vulnerability appeared. That means it's it's a week old, it's a new thing. For example, this vulnerability has been on our system for the past three months, we're aware of it. So it tracks our vulnerabilities, help to gauge the effective, effectiveness of our security measures. Simply put, if we have good security measures, why did this new vulnerability, this new weakness, this new exposure appear on our radar, appear in our scanner? It tells us whether our security system is working or not. Because if your security system and, and specifically your preventive security systems are working, you should not have those vulnerabilities. And what you do afterward, you prioritize. You just say, here's the, here, here are the most important one based on their impact. And you would remediate. Remediate means what? Fix those vulnerabilities. Now, the problem with fixing vulnerabilities, sometimes you may not be able to fix them immediately. Because if you need to fix them, if you need to patch them, if you need to update the software, it may impact day-to-day -day business operation. It might impact your overall IT infrastructure. So sometimes what you have to do, you have to live with those vulnerabilities. Accept that risk maybe for a period of time until you can fix, deploy some sort of a patch, which is a fix or an update or remove that vulnerability from the system. And at some point you have to live with it. So in this session, we would look at the vulnerability assessment, we look at the scanner and the tools that we have in order to understand this step of cyber security. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course, such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses, broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Other benefits of vulnerability assessment is you are going to expose your company your employees, your resources to more exposure, expose them to more exposure, right? What does that mean? It means by doing the, those vulnerability assessment, you're going to have a comprehensive IT review process. You're going to review every single IT process because you're going through the system and you're scanning for vulnerabilities. It's going to involve a thorough examination of various IT processes which is good. Why? Because as you do so, you're going to highlight any efficiency. It may not be a vulnerability, it might be an efficiency. But you might figure out an efficiency that was overlooked. It may not be a security issue, but if we optimize this efficiency as a company, we are better off. So this is 
Another benefit of vulnerability assessment is it's a comprehensive IT review. Another benefit of vulnerability assessment is when you're going through this vulnerability assessment, you're going to be talking to people, interviewing people, interaction between different departments from different parts of the company because systems communicate. This is to foster better communication. Again, this is going to give you more awareness regarding security practices within your company because now the company the com overall, overall is, is communicating amongst each other. Different departments are being involved in this process. As a result, you're going to talk to people. And when you talk to people, you're going to learn new things about the company. So that's another benefit of vulnerability assessment that goes beyond the traditional benefit of the vulnerability assessment. And of course, byproduct of those two, you're going to have a holistic organizational insight through the aggregate analysis of systems and processes across the organization and across the different departments, across the different personnel, management gains a holistic view of how different parts are interconnected. And well, that's very good for the company anyhow. So notice, vulnerability assessment has additional benefit other than just, other than just assessing your vulnerabilities, your IT vulnerabilities. So this can reveal how vulnerabilities in one area might impact or be impacted by practices in another area. And this helped the company develop more integrated and effective security strategies. Now let's talk about the scanners. What are the scanners? Again, as I mentioned, think of the scanners as your antivirus or think of, think of it as a radar. It's basically a software. It's a tool designed to do what? The purpose of it is to protect the asset by identifying, telling you, so those red dots are vulnerabilities, weaknesses in the system. So how do they operate? Well, again, think of it as a software uh, or some sort of a technical tool, and that's going to that's gonna scan your system and compare your system against a regularly ref refreshed list of known security issues, exactly like an antivirus software. How does an antivirus software work? It scans your system and it looks at things on your system that somebody already identified in the past as issues, as viruses, as malware. And if it finds them, it compares their fingerprint, it compares their ID, it compares their characteristic to something in the antivirus software database. And if they match, it will tell you you have a vulnerability there. Same exact concept here. You're going to scan the system and you're going to compare the system to something called CVE, Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures. And we're going to see what these are. So that's what they do. Now, how do they do it? Let's kind of walk you through more steps, like specifically, what do they look for first when they do those scannings? What are they looking for? What do they scan specifically? Scanner tools look for open ports, open doors looks for network ports on a system that are open or could potentially allow unauthorized users. Why? Because we want to close those doors or if they, there's any weaknesses, we may, we need to reconfigure those or do something about them. They might look at data packets, and this is where the firewall will do so. Will do so. They will examine the data packets, the data being sent over the network to detect any suspicious pattern or anomalies. So they look at the inside the packet that's being transmitted to figure out is this legitimate? They identify protocols. Protocols are languages. They identify protocols in use. What protocol are we using on our network? Checking for any outdated protocols or protocols that are insecure. What do we do with them? We update, we patch, we remove. That's what we do. Also, they go through something called fingerprinting. This step involves determining the specific type of operating system and application running on our system. Why do we do so? To identify known vulnerabilities associated with them. Basically looking at the system from its originality. Looking like, like Think of a detective looking for a clue in a crime scene, looking for anything unusual. So we have the system, we have this operating system, we have these applications. Are they working as expected? Or there's any changes in them? We're looking at their fingerprint. So that's some of the, some of the things that the vulnerability scanners would look for. Now, this is the good news. The bad news about vulnerability scanners, those scanners are available. So I can use them, you can use them. Also, cybersecurity criminals can use them. So the same tool that are used to protect your company, they are also used for cyber attackers. What does that mean? It means they can scan your system to find weaknesses in your defenses. That's the bad news. Now, when would they do when would they do when would they do so the most? When you go through 
an update. Why? Because when you go through an update, you have a new system that, that's being tested. And this is where they're going to find a room, maybe, that the new system might have some weaknesses that you're not aware of, and they may beat you to that. And they might exploit this brief window before companies apply the update and launch an attack. And this is problematic, especially when, when you have a predictable schedule of updates. So attackers know every three months at the end of the quarter, this company implement new IT updates. Right after you apply the update, immediately they will scan the system to see if this update uh, basically created a water hole. A water hole means some weakness in your system and they will attack you through that. Earlier, we mentioned the CVE, Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures. And we said, this is the database where the scanners compare what they found against this database to determine if there's any vulnerabilities. So let's talk about this CVE, Common Vulnerabilities and Exposure. Well, think of it as a dictionary, okay? The, co the Common Vulnerabilities and Exposure Dictionary plays a pivotal role in cybersecurity landscape. Think of it as a dictionary, but it's basically, it's a database and in that database, every time we find a vulnerability, every time we or other companies or people in the industry find a vulnerability, they will input that vulnerability in that database. Now, this database it is managed by a company called MITRE, METER, depending how you pronounce it. So this CV assigned a unique identifier to different security vulnerabilities and exposure as they are discovered. So I discover a vulnerability, I will send it, and we all agree we're going to call this vulnerability X. Then everybody, now there's a description what's vulnerability X is. And if you have a vulnerability X, well, you know you have it. If you don't have it, now you're aware of it and you scan your system against that vulnerability X. And this initiative helps in the uniform recognition and documentation of vulnerabilities across platform, software, and network. This way, if I find a vulnerability, if I find an exposure to my system, I share it with the world. Other people share it through the CVE dictionary. Other companies, they found the vulnerability and they're going to call it Y and they're going to give it a description and they're going to add it. Now I'm aware of Y because I know exactly what Y is. So this way when they scan my, when I, when I use, when I scan my system, I look for Y, I already discovered X and now X and Y are known for all co other companies and the system and everybody is aware of it. So building a database of known vulnerabilities and let companies use this database to check their system against it. Remember, those are known vulnerabilities. Known means we already discovered them. It doesn't help if there's a new vulnerabilities, of course. Now, why is this system good? Because think about pre-CVE system. Before, the, before we had this system, the cybersecurity community faced significant challenges in tracking all the vulnerabilities. And if you, if, even if you can track it, how are you going to mitigate it? Because if other people mitigated it and they told you how, dealt with it, they can share this information with you. So because we did not have standardized naming conventions, so if you find vulnerability X and you called it X and some other company call it something else, uh, you might be working and they're duplicating the effort because they don't know it's X. But once everybody knows it's X, this is the, this, this is the description of it. Once they find it, it's X, they know how to mitigate. Before pre-CVE, everybody was there on their own. Now it's it's helpful to share. So different organization would often use varied names and description for the same vulnerability, leading to confusions and inefficiency in addressing security threat. So basically companies are helping each other in this process. So the inconsistency in vulnerability identification made it difficult for security professionals to make sure they are protected from at least known threats. Now at least known threats, everyone is aware of them. Well, the unknown, the remaining unknown, but at least the known one, everyone is on the same page. This way it makes the job of cybersecurity professional a little bit more easier. So how does it work? So the introduction of the CVE dictionary changed the landscape, providing a central repository where each vulnerability is giving a unique identifier, a unique name. For example, the, could, the identifier could be CVE 2023-12345, and there's a description for it, and now I'm aware of this, therefore if I scan my system and the description matches this, I know I have this common vulnerability and exposure, which is number 12345 that was discovered in 2025, I know how to deal with it. This system enables clear and consistent communication about vulnerabilities within and between different organization. So CVE compatible product and services leverages CVE dictionary to identify vulnerabilities that they can address. So this way, we know what they are, 
we can leverage this dictionary to, to look for those vulnerabilities. And once we find them, we know how to deal with them because someone already dealt with that vulnerability. That's a known vulnerability. And if it's known, well, we know how to deal with it. So when a product is labeled CVE compatible, it indicates that it uses CVE identifier to reference vulnerabilities, making sure that users are aware of the specific security gap that have been mitigated. And that's important. If we already know about it, we know how to mitigate it, it's good. So now when software vendors discover flaws in their box or when the company discovered if there's a vulnerability in their, in their, in their uh, Now, when software vendors, people that sell you the software, sell you the system, discover any flaws or bugs in their product, what, what do they do? They develop and release patches to fix the vulnerability. Or when you find those vulnerabilities, what do you do? You try to fix them. For what purpose? Protecting users from potential exploits. Now, this process is called patch management. It's basically patching the system, fixing what's wrong. So patch management is crucial for cybersecurity because it helped reduce security risk by addressing those vulnerabilities that you discovered in your software, in your application, in your hardware, through updates known as patches. You're patching the system. And what you need to do as well, you need to keep track of patches. You keep track of patch management because your system eventually gets audited. The system itself gets audited. And as a result, you, you want to know what did you update in your system so the auditor would know what remain not updated and would let you know that you know you did not update you know version 5.6 you're up to 5.4 so you want to keep track of all these patches so you can bring your system up to date now what is the patch management what's the patch management you don't just go ahead there's there's a problem you patch it there's there's a process the patch management is a comprehensive and includes several key steps one is assessment it administrators first they evaluate the relevance of the patch to their organization is this patch is this the right fix for us now not all patches might be necessary for your environment it depends on your software on your application so first is is this a good thing for us if the answer is yes it's a good thing we need this patch what do we need what do we need to do next install it not at all first you test it before you deploy it before you install it you apply it in a controlled isolated environment what does that mean for example, take a, take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. Before I update my system, before I deploy a new feature, I don't deploy it on the live website. I have a dummy website, which is similar to my live website. First, I test that new update, and if it works properly, I move it to the live update. Same thing with patches. You don't just go ahead and patch your system live. First, you test it. This step ensures that it doesn't adversely affect the system or interfere with other applications. I'll give you an example. For example, one time I wanted to add a payment system to my website. After I added the payment system, it affected other areas of the website. Well, what does that mean? It means I should not have applied that payment system automatically on the live website first, tested same in the background, offline, see how it works. If it doesn't affect anything, test it live or install it live. You don't test it live, you install it. Then you plan, administrators collaborate with management to schedule the patch implementation. Once you test it, it's good to go. You have to coordinate with other people to minimize disruption to business operation. Then you install, deploy, whatever term you want to use. The patch is then rolled out across the organization system. This step may be done gradually. You, know, you may deploy those patches step by step to see what the reaction is. Or you could deploy it all at once. Maybe you have to deploy it all at once, depending on the severity of the vulnerability and what impact it has on operation. Then at the end, you test your patch management system. Is it working properly? So after deployment, the IT confirms that the patch has been successfully applied and is functioning as intended without causing any unforeseen issues. And that's the problem with technology, software. Often you would, you would face some unforeseen issues. You don't expect something to happen. You install a patch, you install an update, and something would happen. That's why you always have to validate to make sure it's working as expected. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. TechCorp IT team is preparing to deploy a critical patch. Why is testing the patch on isolated system and is a necessary step before widespread implementation? So the question asks, why do I need to test it before I deploy it? Well, let's see. Is it to increase the time it takes to deploy the patch? 
Do you want to increase the time? Is this the purpose? Not at all. You, you want to reduce the time. It's going to increase the time, but that's not the purpose why you would why you would test it. I would say A is out. Easy elimination. B, to ensure the patch does not adversely affect system operation or compatibility with other software. I would say that's a good reason why you want the test. Let's keep B. Uh, to comply with software vendor requirement for additional software purchases. Now that you know, usually not usually software vendors they don't put such a requirement. I would say C is out. To justify the IT departmental annual budget. Uh, no, not to, that's not why you're taking your time. As expected, B is the most reasonable answer, and that that is to make sure the patch does not negatively affect system operation or compatibility with other software. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs. That's going to help you, whether you're studying for your CPA exam, accounting courses, or any other professional certification. Invest in yourself. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.